Whispering Bill Anderson. When they've got bright lights and country music. He's not one of the names that immediately comes to mind when you think of country music icons, but he was a big time country star back in the late 1950s, 60s, and into the 70s. His unique, soft voice, combined with recitations he made popular in his songs like Mama Sang a Song and Still, earned him the nickname Whispering Bill. With his voice only, one might never think that Bill Anderson would have made it as a country music singer. But it was his incredible songwriting chops that took him to the top of the charts time and time again. Eventually, Bill Anderson would be inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame and the Songwriters Hall of Fame. He finished his career with 30 top 10 hits and five number one songs, and he has been an icon on the Grand Ole Opry stage for more than six decades. But as always, time wins, and in 1980, at the age of 53, Bill's songs were no longer charting, and he had been dropped by his label. Bill took a back seat to the young up-and-coming artists that dominated the 80s, like Barbara Mandrell, Alabama, Willie Nelson, and Dolly Parton. Sure, he had awards and trophies and a great career, but seeing himself left behind by the industry that he was a part of and loved for decades really took a toll on Bill's self-confidence. And things kept getting worse. In Bill's self-titled autobiography, he describes what a miserable decade the 1980s were for him. He got caught up in some bad business deals that cost him much of his fortune. His wife was hit by a drunk driver and suffered permanent mental and physical damage. His daughter had to undergo cancer surgery and treatments. And Bill himself had herniated discs in his back that left him in constant pain and at the mercy of powerful pain pills. To say the 1980s were not good for Bill would be an understatement. Bill hurt financially, physically, and emotionally. The great Bill Anderson, weary and aging, entered the 1990s as a has-been country singer and a completely broken man. This was difficult for a proud and successful entertainer to accept, and Bill figured the 1990s would be just more of the same. But fate had different things in mind. In 1993, Steve Warner had a top five hit with the song, The Tips of My Fingers. Well, Bill had written that song and released it all the way back in 1960. And it had also been a top 10 hit for Bill back then. So Bill was certainly happy that some of his older songs were being recorded and released again, but he was even more ecstatic when he started getting the songwriting royalty checks from Steve's big hit. As it turns out, there was a lot more money in top five country hits in 1993 than there were back in 1960. The checks caught Bill's interest. He was, of course, living in Nashville and had been hosting the Grand Ole Opry for years, so he wasn't completely out of the music business. He started talking about writing again to others he knew, and it wasn't long before someone suggested he give the one and only Vince Gill a call to see if he would be interested in doing some co-writing. Now, Bill was a bit nervous about asking Vince. He didn't know Vince personally, and Vince was a huge star in the early 90s. By this time, Bill was nearing 60 years old and felt somewhat like a relic of country music. But Bill reached out to Vince, and Vince could not have been nicer. They scheduled a co-write almost immediately, and in January 1994, Bill Anderson started co-writing in Nashville again. One of the songs that Bill Anderson and Vince Gill wrote on that cold January day in Nashville, Tennessee, was this song called, Which Bridge to Cross, Which Bridge to Burn? And it went to number four on the country charts. To his great surprise, 
Bill Anderson had his first songwriting hit in decades. As it turns out, Bill could still write just fine with the big boys and girls of country music. Now the thing about co-writing and a top five hit with someone the stature of Vince Gill, well, it opens a lot of doors for even more co-writing. People start calling you. And one of the guys that came calling was Steve Warner, who had gotten this whole thing started by releasing the tips of my fingers a few years earlier. Steve and Bill started writing, and one of the songs they wrote together was this song called Two Teardrops that Steve Warner released in 1999. Two Teardrops landed at number two on the country charts. Now, Bill Anderson also started writing with Georgia native Mark Wills. Mark Wills had had four top five hits up through 1998, and Bill and Mark co-wrote this song, which was released in 1999, and became Mark Wills' first number one hit. The song was called, Wish You Were Here. Wish you were here Wish you could see this place Wish you were Now while all of this writing was going on in 2001, Bill was stunned to learn that he had been elected to the Country Music Hall of Fame. At the age of 64, Bill felt like he had been reborn into the country music industry and he kept writing more songs. Bill wrote a song called When a Man Can't Get a Woman Off His Mind that he couldn't get recorded by anyone on Music Row. Why? Because they kept saying the song was too country. Now, Bill really had no idea how a country music song could be too country. People would compliment the song, say it was perfectly written and very likable, but no one would pick it up. Eventually, Gene Watson released the song. Your left hand son, a grip on me, me like a Ain't it crazy when a man can get And Craig Morgan would cover it, but Bill just couldn't get over how country music executives were telling him a song was too country for country music. So Bill did what songwriters do when they are frustrated. He wrote a song about it. The song he wrote was called Two Country, and he figured it would never see the light of day. But a funny thing happened. Brad Paisley, who Bill knew quite well from their time spent on the Opry, heard Two Country and decided to record it. But he didn't just want to record it himself. He wanted George Jones and Buck Owens along with Bill, to record it with him. Two country. Well, now what's that? Is it too many well, Bill was all too happy to record Two Country with that group of guys. And while Brad didn't release the song to radio, Two Country did win the CMA Vocal Event of the Year Award in 2001. Bill then started writing with Dean Dillon who has written so many of George Strait's hits. Bill and Dean hadn't met the day before they wrote, but they hit it off immediately and wrote A Lot of Things Different, which was a top 10 hit for Kenny Chesney in 2002. Oh, I, I've done a lot of things. Bill also co-wrote another song that he figured would never be played on the radio. Not because this song was too country, but because it was too dark. Nobody would want to hear a song this sad and depressing on the radio. But once again, Brad Paisley showed up and proved Bill wrong. Brad decided to record this too dark song called Whiskey Lullaby. And he pulled Allison Krauss in to sing it with him. The angel sang a whiskey lullaby. Whiskey Lullaby became another top five songwriting hit for Bill Anderson in 2004. And finally, 
The Great George Strait recorded and released a song by Bill Anderson, which went to number one in 2006. The song was called Give It Away. Just give it away. There ain't nothing. Now by this time, Bill Anderson was close to 70 years old. But in many ways, he had had two careers. One as a young songwriter, artist, and host of the Bill Anderson Show back in the 60s and 70s, and then a revival as an older songwriter who proved he could still write with the best of them in the 90s and 2000s. Let me just say how much this means to me personally. I'm old enough to be Carrie Underwood's grandfather. <laughs> and for y'all to still let Bill Anderson be a part of the country music business is wonderful. Thanks to George Strait, Herb Woolsey, Tony Brown, Luke Lewis, Buddy Cannon, and Jamie Johnson. Thank you. Bill Anderson, after being inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 2001, was also inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 2018. Bill continues to write and record even today at more than 80 years of age. And if you go to the Grand Ole Opry, you'll more than likely find him hosting the show that night. After all, he's been a member of the Grand Ole Opry since 1960, going on six decades. There's plenty we could talk about about Whispering Bill Anderson's young career, and we will, but that's a story for another day.